Hi, everybody. I'm Kim Winter, Logistics Executive Group, and it's my pleasure to host today's vodcast. Um, by all means, before I forget, by all means, go to Logistics Executive TV on YouTube if you want to see our series of uh, insights and executive briefings and discussions. Today, I'm very, very pleased uh, to be joined by somebody from deep, deep south, a country almost as deep south as New Zealand, where I'm originally from, from South Africa. And uh, we've got today Jenny Froome. Hey, Jenny. Hi, Kim. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing good, and thanks very much for joining us. What's the traditional South African, uh, or in your case, Afrikaans, maybe is the language you would use of welcoming? Um, English is English, I'm ashamed to say. English is my language. Um, so it's a good old-fashioned good morning at this time of day. <laughs> good stuff. Hey, and uh, look, Jenny, you are the manager for the uh, the Peak Professional Body for Supply Chain in South Africa and uh, wanted to have a chat to you today about SAPEX and about yourself. So maybe you can just uh, give us a bit of a heads up on, on what your career has looked like to, to date. And uh, then we'll talk a little bit about SAPEX and some of the key uh, factors that are going on in the industry in South Africa. Okay, great. Um, well, first of all, thanks very much for the opportunity. It's always great to talk about what I am so passionate about, which is SAPEX. I've been, or SAPEX, depending on what mood I'm in. Um, we've been working um, for this organization for really over 20 years. Um, we started managing it as a for the conference um, because my background is uh, I started life, my professional career as a secretary, and I've just kind of evolved. You know, you always hear about people stumbling into supply chain management. Well, I'm one of those people indirectly um, via event management, which I think is probably one of the most practical examples of what an effective supply chain is. Um, we all, we've all managed an event at some time in our lives, be it a personal one or a professional one, and we know that it's only as good as, as the, the preparation and the planning, um, and that it's, it's the sum of a whole load of different parts, and, and I always think that that's probably one of the best examples of what supply chain management is. Sure. And how, and how long has SAPEX been going in South Africa? 54 years. Oh, Wow. It's an enormous yeah. period of time, almost yeah. as old as me. Um, <laughs> and and what what's the 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 mandate? And what is the ethos behind SAPEX? We we have a, a very grandiose, not grandiose, but it, our, our our mantra is is that we want to build a vibrant um, community of educated supply chain professionals. Um, and, and I think that's what we've done or what we're doing. We've got an amazing community of supply chain practitioners and service providers all from all different kinds of industries um, in South Africa and increasingly from the rest of the continent. Um, and, and that's really education in all its forms is what's important to us. And it can be from textbooks and international certifications to site visits around various distribution centres and, and things like that. It doesn't all have to be out of textbooks. Sure. And then what uh, what is the structure of your membership there? Is this mainly supply chain companies or is it students as well? What is the makeup of, of the body itself? It's, it's predominantly individuals. Somebody said to me once long ago, we want people with, with blood through their veins. Um, so we have corporate partners as well, but the emphasis is really on their employees. And we also have student members. Okay. And uh, with, uh, with the education programs that you run, are these generated from your organisation or you're affiliated with other international organisations? Yep, we're affiliated with um, ASCM and we offer the APEX International Certifications, which I think everybody's quite familiar with. Um, we're also a global affiliate of the Demand Driven Institute and all things for the Demand Driven Enterprise. Um, and we are also affiliated to, uh, to IBF, which is focusing on business forecasting and their international certification for CPF. So it's a, it's a good variety, but we do have local local authors and local offerings that are locally um, registered and partners who have materials who are locally accredited. We've got quite a complex, um, I think the same is true of a lot of countries, we have quite a complex national qualifications framework um, and, and supply chain management tends not to sit very comfortably because it embraces so many different elements of, of education 
and business. Sure. So, so a lot of the countries around the world where we have offices right throughout Asia, Pac, Oceania, India, North Asia, Europe, here in the Middle East, uh, industry representation or industry associations and bodies tend to be rather fragmented. I think something rather synonymous around the supply chain logistics world. Um, what's the state of play in South Africa? I'm not familiar. I, I had an office in, in South Africa just at the beginning of the GFC, which didn't last long, uh, unfortunately, in, uh, in a lovely place called Ravonia in Johannesburg. Um, really enjoyed that time, but the GFC meant we had to close down and withdraw from that market. Um, but there were a couple of industry associations around at the time. Uh, are there many industry associations in South Africa or are you it? No, 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 there are lots. Um, Everybody is sort of focusing on different parts or different uh, specialities of the supply chain. So there's the South African Association of Freight Forwarders, there's the Chartered Institute of Purchasing and Supply, SIPS, which is a global body. Um, So there are are a lot, a lot of, of, of different associations. And we do, on the whole, try really hard to work together. Um, it's not always easy and, and it often it depends as with all these associations it often depends on the volunteer uh, directors because we're 100% volunteer um, driven from a strategic point of view our, our board is entirely volunteer um, so it often depends on, on what that particular chair what their passion is where their focus lies so, so over the years we've had strong partnerships with all sorts of different organisations including Um, the South African Institute for Industrial Engineers, because certainly here in South Africa, an awful lot of people in supply chain management started life and are educated as industrial engineers. So it's it's easy to collaborate, but it takes effort. And I think that's something that we all try to do, but sometimes our real, real jobs get in the way. Sure. Well, look, since we got you and, uh, you know, South Africa sometimes a little bit like Australia or New Zealand is the bottom end of the world and it's not on the way really to anywhere. It's, it's before you head off into Antarctica. So we tend to get left out a little bit. It seems to make sure our rugby is okay, though. But uh, other than that, uh, a lot of people may not know, a lot of our audience may not know a lot about South Africa and what industries are predominantly uh, focused there and what are the strengths of supply chain. Tell us a little bit about what the main elements of supply chain and industry are that drive supply chain uh, down in South Africa? So, so many different, you know, our, our member base ranges from food manufacturers to, uh, to public health. So there are all sorts of different elements that are of vital importance um, in, in the supply chain profession. And I think that planning is probably one of the, one of the, the mainstays or where a lot of people start. Um, and, and obviously watching the, the evolution in technology, digitization, et cetera, et cetera. We are, we are, we're, we're a country of, of many, many different, um, made up of very many different parts. So we have, as, as most countries, we have extreme poverty and we also have a great wealth. Um, we have areas that are so far advanced technologically that the internet basically flies off off the system, but then other places where they have no internet at all. Um, We have the smartest cell phones in the world and some people have never even seen a cell phone. So it's it's such extreme diversity um, that I think that that's what is is really part of its magic. It is is geographically and scenically one of the most beautiful countries in the world, um, in my opinion. And, And I think that it is made up of a populace of some of the most incredible people in the world. Um, I'm English by birth and I've lived in an awful lot of countries. And and for me, South Africa is one of those countries that kind of has the potential to have it all. Um, And from a supply chain perspective, we have professionals in this country who are outstandingly brilliant and who have been educated here at some of the best universities in the world um, and and we offer or some of our universities offer some of the top um, top degrees in logistics management and supply chain management um, but we've got infrastructure that's failing us and we've got government issues and COVID has not helped anything at all obviously yeah. anywhere in the world um, apart from people who who create 
create digital meeting space, I think. Sure. Um, and, and so we have a, a lot of challenges. And at the moment, our unemployment is enormous. So whatever we can do from an education perspective is, is what we have to do. And, and you asked about our mandate. One of our, our biggest um, driving forces is what can we do to give back to the supply chain community in this country and being a, a very small team often we can't do very much um, but one of our, our greatest things that we, we enjoy the most is our student conference that we do every year um, and that's something that you know we've actually had young professionals being given interviews because they are members of SAPIX. And, and that for me is kind of, you know, what drives the majority of our team, I think, is knowing that you are making a difference in, in that way. There's a couple of things I'm interested in. You mentioned um, about COVID, of course, and this has been a tough year for everybody. And I know certain parts of uh, South Africa in particular are really struggled in terms of infrastructure, as you mentioned. Um, how, how has, just as a, as a quick fire response, how has uh, the supply chain functioned uh, throughout the, the COVID period and the pandemic? Because some countries have managed reasonably well or very well in some cases in regards to where the supply chain has supported the, uh, the public health and private health sector during the pandemic. How, how has South Africa fared? Well or not so well? I think one of the things that Africa as, as a continent um, is experienced in from a public health perspective is the, is the rollout of various different drugs and the commodities that go with those drugs to support them. Like, you know, everybody's talking about the rollout of vaccines around the world, but what about all the bits that go with them? It's no good having a vaccine if you don't have syringes. Um, and it's that extended supply chain that I think that in South Africa, uh, uh, and on the continent because, sadly, we've got so many other diseases. Um, I think that there is a vast amount of experience and expertise that's been garnered through, through the years and years and years of, of, of fighting these diseases. But one of the things that is obviously most concerning from a disruption point of view in the public health space is, is how it's affected these other diseases that, that we've nearly gotten on top of and that, that now have been disrupted and things like the provision of contraception and birth control and all these elements that we have taken for granted over so many years now suddenly are coming back as a, as a problem. Sure. Um, and I don't think that's just Africa. I think that's a, no, I think you're it's right. a global, global challenge. Yeah, we, we're seeing that as a, as a byproduct of the pandemic, of course, and that, and that balance of, of uh, a lot of uh, measles, for example, and, and, yeah. uh, and various other uh, diseases which were controlled in some countries coming back yeah. because vaccination's not taking place. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a real challenge. What about e-commerce? Yeah. I mean, we often talk about e-commerce. Yeah. This is a quick fire response. How developed is, uh, is South Africa in terms of e-commerce? Uh, has the pandemic meant there's been a massive increase? Some countries up to 50 to 100 percent increase in e-commerce and uh, e-store and uh, distribution channels in the last mile of it's exploded. What's yeah. been happening in South Africa over the last few months? All the above, all the above. Um, I, I think that, again, you know, from an infrastructure point of view, we've got huge challenges from a last mile delivery perspective. And from, a, from an e-commerce, I think that it has taken off exponentially, having been very... Um, People have been very reticent to use it because, of course, you need data. And where do you get a lot of free data? You get a lot of free data from the shopping malls. So people have, have traditionally gone to the mall to get their data to be able to do their online activity. Um, now, all of a sudden, and data in South Africa is very expensive. Um, I, think, I think I'm right in saying we are one of the most expensive countries in the world when it comes to our data, which is ironic when we have a population that... It, can't afford it um, and yet needs it. And particularly, I'm digressing, but particularly from an education perspective, the, the what are they calling it now? The digital divide has become so, so apparent in this country. Mm -hmm. And I think the same is true for e-commerce as well. Um, you know, there are people who live in areas where 
with the best will in the world, um, delivery companies are not going to go to. Um, you know, I, I live in one of those areas. So there are some people who will deliver here, but there are other people who won't because it's rural, because it's, well, it's not that yeah. rural, but, you know, various different reasons. Sure. But I think that the, the, the from, a, from an actual e-commerce point of view, though, the South African yeah. attitude to it has changed. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't say overnight because it's been eight Thanks. months, but it's changed. Yeah, interesting. I suppose that's an opportunity for other organis- for organisations from other parts of the world to look at South Africa as a greenfield and uh, get to work and providing some data solutions down there from the digitalization of, of the supply chain, of course, is running rampant in many parts of the world. Uh, look, I know you've got to go to another meeting in a couple of minutes, Jenny. So, look, I just had a final question for you, a quick fire question, maybe for, for one, one minute or two minutes. Um, for, for those wishing to enter, and this is not just South African centric, this is globally from an industry association manager, um, for, for, for young people in particular wanting to make their way uh, into the supply chain or logistics, given that the exposure and the presence of logistics and supply chain has become that much more present during uh, this, this terrible year in some degrees that we've had, um, what, what would your recommendation be if there was one thing that you're going to recommend to young people wanting to make their career in supply chain or logistics, what would it be? Just to finish off. Uh, I'm, I'm obviously very, very biased, and my immediate point <laughs> of advice would be join a, join an association, join a professional body. Uh, you've got access to people who have a vast amount of experience. Um, you know, we've got one chap who has been to 30 annual conferences in a row and he's the first person to put his hand up to mentor or to guide people as far as you know education is concerned and and that that for me like I said earlier we've had people being given interviews because okay. starting out in their career That's because so they join, belong to association. So join an industry association get in amongst it and uh, get familiar with what's going on um, possibly and on LinkedIn and, and all of the networking that goes with it. Hey, Jenny, really uh, appreciate your, your support today and coming to join us. I hope our audience has got some insight into South Africa. Congratulations on the work that you do and uh, we you. look forward to staying in touch with you. Definitely, and thanks for the opportunity again. Jenny Frome from uh, SAPEX, thanks very much and thank you to our audience. Uh, we look forward to catching up with you again soon. Thanks a lot. Bye.